quite some time ago now, I said that dismantling the Zemsky Sobor was the worst path that the Soviets have. But is that still the case? I don't know. So, there is only one way to find out. Let's begin. Well, first things first. Looks like we've got ourselves a little state expansion mini-game. How fun. Anyway, for this little bit of prep, there's going to be like no shenanigans today. No changing the divisions over to artillery or anything. We're actually going to play intended for once. So let's begin. And of course, I could do things like offer Vladivostok to Japan, Sakaian for arms, backing for oil rights, blah, 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 blah. But these are no good. I've even done a What's the Point episode on the Soviet concessions if you want to see more. Now, here's something interesting. When No Step Back first released, for some reason when you went the monarchist path, you couldn't send volunteers to Republican Spain when the Civil War started. But that's clearly changed because I can do this. Nice. Thanks to that, I can now grind out a load of XP. Which actually saves me having to hire someone like an army reformer. I didn't expect to actually have a positive for this, but I do. Although I guess there is the downside of constantly having to go back and forth, back and forth to make sure I'm actually doing the state expansion right. That is kind of annoying. But what can you do? Well, that's ironic. Stalin's gonna get rid of Popov. And who has he turned into a cow this time? No one good. Guess we're just gonna have to grind you out. You're the least egregious. Such a shame that this is the only way for us to get more generals. Because fun fact, there was originally another way. As you can see here, there was meant to be a trait called Monarchist Sympathizer, but Paradox removed it before NSB came out. I can only assume that they thought it was a bit much or something. I don't know. But fun fact, you can re-enable this fairly easily if you know your way around Hoyforth code. Normally Great Purges, of course, are a massive pain in the ass, But in a situation like this, they don't matter at all. In fact, they can be beneficial for us. If you get the right ones, we can get like five generals turned into cows. Which is five more potential generals to defect to us. You know it's not going well for the Nationalists when their units are actually just dying of attrition, even when there's unplanned offensive here. Well, the moment has arrived. The hands must do. And our revolution will begin. It's a good thing that this focus also gives us an extra 10% support from the army. Although it is annoying that it takes this long to get started. I've rushed down to this focus. I've gone here pretty much as quickly as I can, and it's April 37. For comparison's sake, Germany's civil war has started and ended by now. Although, to be fair, I think Germany's civil war is absolutely ridiculous and should be changed. If both of them were like this, I probably wouldn't have anything to say. But as it stands right now, with Germany's being so goddamn fast, God damn, it's annoying. And yeah, another benefit of this actual change is that we could actually get Spain's gold reserves. Although, I do believe the Civil War will start before we have the chance. Oh well, just something to think about, you know? Well, we've managed to get this general, organizer, and infantry leader. You better defect to us, because I've invested a lot into you. Well, here we go. Two arms. Let's go to Cheetah. Yep, here's what fine mess I've made. Cut the Soviets into many little pieces. We now have... Four armies or so. Very well. Okay, let's put you guys on our main front and do the push towards Moscow. Shouldn't be too bad, but you never know. Anyway, I'm not going to give you traits just in case our general shows up. Although it is funny just how many field marshals we start with. 
Anyway, I guess... Hmm... Yeah, the mode plan, and let's begin to break that cipher. Thank you very much. And also assign those planes. Obviously, the main thing we're waiting for is uprisings. They will help us significantly. Let's begin. Right, you are recruits. Go and take the step. I cannot be bothered to send the main army to do that. Oh, the mountaineers came back. Nice. You're very welcome. Nice. Our first affection. Simeon. Welcome. Such a shame you're absolutely rubbish. Why couldn't we have gotten to Kachevsky? Or someone useful? No, we got you. But I'll happily take your extra units. It's really telling that the most amount of success I've had is just by making my units snake. Ridiculous. That shouldn't be working. I'm enjoying the defections, but I'd actually like a general, please. Oh my, my snake can actually work so much when I should get to goddamn Moscow. That's ridiculous, isn't it? That probably shouldn't have been a thing. Again, it really shows that my units are complete idiots. They won't move, unless I absolutely tell them to. Finally, another defector, Vasili. Nice. I should have grinded you out, as it turns out. Oh, I thought it was an uprising, but nope, it's over. Nice. August 17th. Oh well, let's continue down with this little focus tree. Still got a lot to do before we can have the return of the Tsar. But damn, look at the utter state the country's in. So much has been destroyed. In fact, why am I doing Article 1, 2, 4? There's something much better I can do instead. Such a shame I didn't get the defections I wanted. I really wanted that organiser. I really, really did. But oh well, we got two. Simeon and Vasili, which I guess is okay. Yep, looks like we're going to have to rebuild the nation. Which I would say is okay. You know, consumer good factories, factor minus 10%. Factory repair speed plus 25 for 540 days. That sound alright. But when you compare it again to Germany's, like, what? what is it now, like, minus 50% factor? I don't remember, I haven't checked for a while. But still, it's ridiculous that it's only 10% when Germany gets so goddamn much. Again, Germany needs a nerf. A big one. Well, the great moment has arrived. The Zemsky Sobor has reassembled, and the Tsar is back. Hi, Vladimir. And now it's time to immediately get rid of Vladimir. Let's dismantle the Zobor. It is really annoying that we're actually going to lose 31% stability, isn't it? But oh well. And here he is. The man, the myth, the legend, Constantine. Of the two leaders, he's probably the better, let's be absolutely fair. Cheaper advisors. Slightly less master impact, but no one knows what that is anyway, so who cares? And of course, we get the upside of being able to go to war economy. Oh, and also having elections, which I don't entirely understand, but... Whatever. Time to have a little look at this focus tree. The first thing that actually sticks out to me is Russian corporate state. Four extra sieves, and a tiny bit of extra output. That's nice. When you combine that with um, aristocratic investments, it does actually work. Nice. So, I guess that's a nice little benefit that is unique here. And oh yeah, while we're on the subject of Constantine, thanks to the ultimate ideology exploit that I showed some time ago, if you combine that with the right opposition's national spirit that makes advisors cheaper, you can actually get your advisors completely free with this guy as your leader. It's total nonsense, I know, but hey, it's just something fun to bring up. 
Next up is what most people will consider the main attraction of this path, the Berlin-Moscow Axis. And you know what? It's a fine focus. Good. It contrasts Reforged the Triple Entente very well. I like the options on how to deal with Germany. You either ally them or ally against them. The thing is though, we're not actually going to be doing that focus because there's actually something else that requires our attention. Eastern Expansion. Supply consumption minus 10% is invaluable, fine. Cold acclimatization gain plus 25% is, let's be real, kind of useless. But still, I can't complain, it's a nice national spirit to have. And here we go. The big one down here. Intervention in the Americas. This will create a faction for us. Right, who's gonna say yes? Anyone? Anyone? Peru? Good. Is that it? I hope not, because I'm going to begin to restore the old Eastern Empire. And there is Russian meddling in the Americas, which sounds very interesting. As you can see in our focus tree, doing this focus gives all of Latin America this little spirit that adds extra fascist support. So let's see if that's helped them in any way. Wait, 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 wait. Oh yeah, I remembered. This national spirit has been broken since NSB came out. Which bottom line means the main upside of this doesn't even work. It would have been actually interesting if it did. As you see, if countries actually flip because of this, they would join our faction. But there's no way of even knowing if that works. But let's be real, the way things are looking right now, it doesn't look like it even works at all. Because only Peru answered the call. Which is goddamn annoying. You know, I think at this point, no one else is going to answer the call. How rude. If Dominica actually said yes, I was going to at least try and invade the US, because, you know, that could have been interesting. But yeah, I don't think we're going to have enough supremacy to get from Peru. And even if we did, we'd have to go by the Panama Canal, which would just be an absolute pain. So, uh, yeah, I don't think that's happening. At this point, it would have just been simpler to just declare on the Allies, take Canada, and push down. But I was trying to think of things that this tree did uniquely. And if I managed to invade the US via these war goals, that would have been interesting. So, um... Yeah. So, what's there to say about dismantling the Zemsky Sobol? It's, it's still a mess, and it has been since 2021. Seriously, if intervention in the Americas actually worked, that would at least be something, I guess. Like I said, the Berlin-Moscow axis is fine, it contrasts quite well. Japanese overtures is useless, let's be real, because Japan always has their faction. I have nothing to say for Westward Bound and Rebuild the Far Eastern Fleet. They're acceptable, they're okay, but it's shared with Romanov Reconstruction, so it's not unique to this path. I should also note, I did finish the Civil War a lot faster than I expected to. You know, June, July, that's about what you would expect for Bukharin and Trotsky. But then again, that's not specific to this path either, so it can go either way. But the way things stand, as they are, I still think Romanov Reconstruction is the better path. Simply because everything there works. I know that's the bare minimum for a focus tree to do, but this is Hoi 4. Sometimes that is the bare minimum we have to ask for. So, until next time everybody, I thank you for watching, I do hope you've enjoyed it, and until we meet again, from me, Bubble Zest, goodbye.